But anyway, let me move on to the next topic now. Um, before I get into the main topic, I'm going to talk about this. Um, I can't remember what made me think of this earlier, isn't it? But this is when you know you're on a jolting in life, yeah? When you're a man and you have a little sister or a sister at that, but especially a younger sister, not two years younger than you, considerably younger than you, nine, ten years younger than you. And at some point in your life, whatever, for whatever reason, things go bad. It's got nothing to do with health conditions and that. Yeah? Because you can't help if you have bad health to a certain degree. Now, if you're eating chicken and chips 10 times a day, then obviously, if some health, mad health conditions strike you at that, well, it's just unfortunate, isn't it? But it ain't got nothing to do with health conditions, isn't it? It's, it's got something to do with bad and poor decisions and that. If you're a man and you grow up and that and you end up living at your sister's yard, you should be ashamed of yourself. I know, man. I've come across man before who is big man, but they're living at their little sister's yard. Their little sister's 30 and their man they are 40 years old. What are you doing living at your little sister's yard? Your little sister's got a family. Your little sister's getting dug out in the room next door in the middle of the night, fam. This is madness, blood. That's when you know you're on a, you're on a jolt thing when you're living at your little sister's yard. This is how you know you ain't got your things patterned if you're living at your sister's yard, fam. Your little sister. Imagine me. Yeah? Imagine me. Like, my little sister's nine right now. Yeah? Imagine when my little sister's all 25 years old. Yeah? In about 16 years' time. Imagine me. I'll be about 46 then. Imagine me going to live with my little sister as a big rascal, 46-year-old man in my little sister's yard. This is someone, my sister's supposed to and have to always look at me in admiration. I want to be like that guy. I want to be like my older brother, Jay. How can your sister look up to you if you're sleeping in her yard, on her sofa? Your younger siblings and that, whether they like you or not, they're supposed to look at you and think, yeah, you know what, yeah? If I ended up like him, my life wouldn't be that bad, isn't it, yeah? You know what I'm saying? My little brother, we don't talk and that, we don't get along. But there's no way he could not fix it. So, you know what, yeah? If I was in Jay's position, I would eat you in mine. Yeah, he would like to be in my position, yeah? Set your feelings and emotions aside and that. Get me? There's no way you look, especially your little sister. Maybe if there's your little brother in it, yeah? But me still, I don't business. But it's just that little bit worse. Remember what I said earlier? If you get rushed out on the street, it's bad. But it's even worse when there's a phone involved, when there's footage that can get repeated, repeated and circulated throughout social media. It's bad if you, you get me, you ain't got your life pattern and that you're on a joke thing and you, um, what do you call it? You have to end up sleeping at your, your little brother's yard and your little brother is not two years younger than you. He's 10 years younger than you. That's bad. But it's even worse when it's your little sister. Get me? Little sisters are supposed to look up to their big brothers. If anything, your little sister is supposed to come sleep at your yard when things go bad. You see me? I've got my thing patterned to the point where, and I told my mum this, if you and my stepdad pass away, I'll take my little sister on. I've got a bedroom upstairs. I've got two bedrooms upstairs. Furthermore, I've got a yard around the corner. But obviously, she's too young to live on her own. And that. Literally, I'm in a position where I can look after my little sister. Yeah, she's at an age where boy, you get me in a couple of years ago well, in September, she started secondary school and that. You know, when little kids are in secondary school, 11, 12, 13 years old, they're basically self sufficient, they can look after themselves to a certain degree, they don't need to be babied and that. They can literally, like, you can literally just give them the key to the yard, they can come home from school because if they're in secondary school, they should be traveling to and from by themselves. They can come home, okay, dinner's not ready, but you know what, there's a ready meal that they can put in the um in the microwave and that till you get home to cook dinner at 6 p.m or whatever and or eat leftovers and that get me when when kids are teenagers now you're pretty much just providing a roof over their head and paying bills for them in it they're pretty much self-sufficient i could take care of my little sister no problem i could provide a roof over her head no problem 
Imagine in what 20 years' time I have to go and sleep at my little sister's yard. Rock bottom. But you know what? That's not rock bottom. Man's heard worse stories than that, you know. Man's heard about stories where a man, and you're laughing, yeah? Oh, okay. You, um, I've heard stories where men have to go, imagine this. If, the, if, the, if staying at your local sister's yard wasn't that bad or was, was bad enough, imagine a man has to go and live at his daughter's yard. Imagine. Imagine you, big Ross Clark, 50 year old man, have to go and stay at your daughter's, who's 30 years old, yard with her boyfriend digging out your door in the middle of the night. And you can't say nothing. What can you say, fam? What can you say, blood? What can you say, fam? Rock bottom. Okay, man said Roald Dahl was an Air Force pilot during World War II. Yeah, the gold, yeah, the gold key, I remember that. It is embarrassing. My little sister fall on hard times. She could come live with me. I ain't gonna look down on my little sister, but I'd expect my little sister to look down on me if I was going. Imagine me, imagine me, big Ross Clark, older brother. My, me, I bathed my little sister in it, cradle her. She's all ten years old. Man, cradle her like she's a newborn, and that. And imagine she's there providing a bed for me in years to come. Joke thing, man. But this is what happens when you don't make good decisions and that, where you try and wing it, like be like these men jumping from this and that. Man just become a youth worker because he done something called ED, a six month course and that. You think these men that become youth workers, it's not because they care about the youths then, it's because they could just do a quick six month course, command them a lazy fam. They don't care about the youths. This, oh, it's easy to get into. I'm still a youth myself because I'm still not found. I ain't got my head patterned and that. So you know what? I might as well do this little idiot six month course so I can earn 80 to 100 pound a day. I'm still talking like them, literally. And I know man's talk street, so you get me? I ain't going to completely fool myself like that, but man will always be a street man. But I still talk like them. I'm still on the same energy as them. Okay, I might as well do this little course for free because the job center put me on it. And boom, I can earn £80 a day just for talking to youths and that. So I man become youth workers and I don't see these men don't care about the youths and that. And some of these youth workers is the worst. If you've watched enough of my videos, you would have heard me mention it a couple of times. If you ain't going to hear it now. One youth, when I was um, uh, 16, there's this thing called Yop, Youth Offending um, Team you have to go to. It's basically probation for under 18s, yeah? And there's one at the top of Bouncers Road, which is the Enfield one. So anyone that gets in trouble in Enfield, which is Palmerstown, Southgate, Enfield, obviously, Edmonton, Winchmore Hill. Um, yeah, if you get your, yeah, we have to go youth offending team, which is probation for the under 18s, for the minors and that. You have to go to the top of Bouncers Road, isn't it? Yeah, that's where the Enfield one is, isn't it? And I remember there was one guy um obviously he knew man was involved in the gang team or whatever and this white guy and i think he was like greek but born here like english born but greek like cypriot or something and i remember he said to me and i remember it like like he was just saying i even picture him right now a short guy got a bit of weight on him as well and he's like you boys from around they ain't bad the real bad boys are from where i'm from south london they don't talk they just stab so what you're telling me an impressionable 16 year old that's trying to build up a reputation on the road side what you're basically saying to me is stop swinging punches stop talking and start picking up tools because when you're on the quest to be a bad boy even if you like your head's fucked and now you're an idiot at the time isn't it? but when you're on, a, on the quest to be a bad boy and that what you're slightly doing is you're not just trying to be a bad boy in your area but you're trying to get on what them man they're on what them South youths, well, them and they don't talk, them and they're just stabbing it. Oh, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Look, a man's trying to not just be a bad boy in this area. A man's trying to be a bad boy in the whole perimeter of London. And that. That's what a man's telling man, you know. The real bad boys are, are where I'm from, South London. 
they don't talk they just stab and they, these are the people that are working with the youth and why are you corrupting the youth people that the youth man name's mine other gal how the hell are you a youth worker as a woman but you're dating a drug dealer that don't even make no sense what you're doing is so if you're if you're a woman and you're dating a drug dealer you're subscribing to that lifestyle yeah you might not get involved in it you might not do anything to get yourself nicked all you're saying is that lifestyle is acceptable so when you're talking to the young people in that there's no way there's no conviction in what you say to them when you're telling you couldn't even I, obviously they're going to say oh yeah don't do this and don't do that but they can hear the tone of your voice they can see the look in your eyes and that there's no conviction in it you're chatting shit, like, because you're dating a man that is a drug dealer think about it think about it logically how can a woman who is dating a drug dealer mentor and coach young people to stay off the streets that don't even make no sense bro literally bro and these are the people that get me uh, um get me coaching and mentoring the young people me i'll throw my hands up right now and yeah and you man know how man talk and how man think if a man violate yeah put your dupes up and swing in him i ain't saying to tell a man to put, pick up knife and that yeah. yeah i believe in you know what as men sweat your problems yeah put man's dupes up have a fight get up shake hands in it yeah that's how i think man at a certain point when the talking stops that's how you solve problems and that anyway I'll promote that all day long, yeah? Go on the grass, take your t-shirt off and swing in it, yeah? And then get up and shake a man's hand in it, yeah? But man's not gonna be telling no one, yeah, pull out knife and that. Nah, 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 I'll be, I'll be a hypocrite to say, oh, don't swing a man, turn the other cheek, walk away. No, I'll never say that. I'll never say that. Let's go on the grass over there in it, yeah? And we're gonna swing in it and we shake hands after this. I ain't gonna be telling no use. Oh, this is what the man them in this ends is on. So this is what you need to be on. Like if he said to me, "Boy, them boys in South London, boy, you know, like, they're terrible out there, man. They just talk. They don't talk. They just stab." That would have been one thing. That wouldn't even be too bad. That's just stating facts. We say, "Oh, you're not bad. You're not bad. The real bad boys are where I'm from, South London. They don't talk. They just stab." So you're, you're saying to me, "Bad, like you ain't you ain't bad." Yeah, so for you to be qualified as a bad boy, you need to be doing this. So what's some gonna what's some youth gonna do? That literally, man. <laughs>